This is Carnival Row. It's a brand new neo-Victorian fantasy series that finally answers the question, what if the Industrial Revolution also had centaurs? And it also has more complex backstory and thoughtful world building than your last D&D campaign. Welcome to Explainiac, I'm Dan Casey, and today we're going to be diving deep into the world of Carnival Row. It's a brand new original TV series from Amazon Prime Video and Legendary Television, which premiered on August 30th. Now, as a matter of disclosure, Nerdist is a part of Legendary Entertainment. I wanted to tell you that and be upfront about it. That said, I would be watching this show regardless because it has everything that I love. Weird fantasy creatures and Orlando Bloom facing the horrors of industrialization. What started as a film school project for Pacific Rim co-creator Travis Beecham has now at long last emerged from its chrysalis as a gritty, grimy, and gripping series about a serial murderer stalking the streets of a city rife with racial tension and economic insecurity. Now, if that sounds a little too real, don't worry. It's just fantasy. It's not like you can discuss politics and real world issues through a fictional lens or anything, right? That's crazy talk, keep your politics out of anything. Starring Orlando Bloom and Cara Delevingne, Carnival Row takes place in the Berg, the capital city of the Republic of the Berg on the continent of Mesa Gia. It's considered to be the locus of human power and culture in this world. Once the beating heart of the Bergish Empire, a sprawling force with considerable colonial holdings and protectorate states across the ocean, it's now home to a democratic republic. Now, its position of preeminence on the global stage is actually in question, because other rising human powers like the Pact have carved up their once prodigious imperial holdings. As such, the Berg is a city caught between yearning for its brutal but bountiful past and its uncertain but more democratic future. Although the Berg was long the seat of human dominance in this world, the city has become increasingly diversified through a massive influx of non-human immigrants. Now, most of the city's non-human residents and many of its human working poor live in the neighborhood of Gloamingside, which acquired the nickname Carnival Row after the first wave of Farish immigrants journeyed from their homeland of Tirnanok to live in the Berg. Carnival Row is home to all manner of non-human races, including the Fae, aka fairies, trow, or trolls, centaurs, and fawns. Now, at first, many Farish immigrants crossed the ocean to settle in the Berg, which helped to bridge the gap between the capital city and its colonial holdings, but the wonder and the whimsy of their arrival unfortunately quickly gave way to scorn and open resentment. Fetishized, objectified, and looked down upon by the Burgish elite, Fey were largely relegated to working as maids or in trades deemed unsavory, like sex work. Other Fey practiced the art of horospexy, fortune tellers who divine the future through visions and crafting potions made from ancient Feyrish recipes. Others, like the Mima, try to preserve the traditions of their homeland, acting as spiritual leaders within the diasporic Fey community. Now, some Fey are taking their fate into their own hands through shadowy groups like the Black Raven, which operate in the Burgish underground to fence stolen goods fairy information, and perform all manner of subterfuge and intrigue. Now, one of the other most visible communities in Carnival Row are the Fawns, who are easily identifiable by their prominent curled horns and cloven hooves. Given the derogatory nickname of Pucks by their human counterparts, Fawns tend to labor in the Berg's many factories or work within wealthy households as maids, groundskeepers, and in other service jobs. Much like the Fawns, the Trow are forced into a life of grueling labor. Their considerably more monstrous appearance, their brute strength, and isolationist tendencies have left them marginalized by human society and exploited by industrialists for their relatively cheap labor. Well, as for the centaur population of Carnival Row, actually, I'll, I'll be honest, I don't know much about them, so let's just say they're like fantasy Uber if your driver was also half car. What I do know about the Berg is that it's a city on the verge of imploding in on itself. Politicians like Absalom Breakspear and his Commonwealth Party want the Berg to be a haven to the many non-human refugees and residents that are pouring into their city. The more nationalistic, xenophobic, and straight-up reprehensible hardtackers see people like the Fey and the Fonz as a blight on their fair city. These increasingly vocal and powerful dissenters are the ones stoking the flames of conflict as the series unfolds. To make matters worse, a serial killer stalking the city streets and targeting the Fae, and there's rumors of a deadly monster somewhere beneath the city's surface. It's up to Rycroft Philo Philostrate, a detective with a heart of gold, and Vignette Stonemoss, a Fairish immigrant with a troubled past, to put an end to the killings before it's too late. But, of course, that's just the beginning of their considerable problems. 
To find out what happened, you'll just have to watch Carnival Row, now streaming on Amazon Prime Video. But in the meantime, tell me, what do you think of Carnival Row so far? Where do you want to see the show go in season two? Let me know in the comments below and give me a thumbs up while you're there. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss a new episode of Explainiac. If you want even more deep dives, then make sure you check out previous Explainiac episodes, which you can watch right now on all of Nerdist channels. And if you want more Carnival Row goodness, check out our behind the scenes series, Into the Carnival Row, or watch our original Carnival Row RPG series right now. And if you have suggestions for future episodes, please leave them in the comments below or tweet me directly at Dan Casey. This is an evolving process and I want you to be a part of it. And remember, not everything in life can be explained, but for everything else, there's this show.